Just like that. They only, they only I'd like to welcome everybody to another session of Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> Got Al Pierce and Colin Brown with us tonight. Getting ready to have a little bit of fun with our guest. What do you think of the lineup there tonight, Colin? Looks good. There's nothing on your screen, by the way. Oh, you got you want to see the screen too? Uh -huh. Well, I'd like to know who. who Feel you like it's gonna be a fun night. Some oh, diversity, huh? That's yeah, cool. I got that Heather menu here. Power. Somebody's there already. Let's talk racing. Hello. Good evening. Hey, Dina. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How about you? Pretty good. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and give us a little quick bio about your racing career so far. Well, my name is Dina Parisi. I currently wield a 2013 Cadillac Pro Mod. I am formerly a professional skater for the Ice Capades, as odd as that may sound, but they're actually, uh, they actually go together pretty well, if you ask me. <laughs> I like that part. I used to do some skating myself way back in the day. Ah, see, there you go. I like racing. It's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're probably both about just as expensive, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, nah, racing's more expensive. <laughs> I don't have to spend millions of dollars to roller skate or to ice skate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can beg to differ on that one. <laughs> okay. Anywho, so uh, go ahead and give us, when did you start racing and what were some of the divisions you've already run in? I uh, started racing probably about 10 years ago with my husband. Uh, he had a, the story went, he had a 67 Camaro. Um, it was blown, it had a 1071 BDS on it. And uh, I enjoyed being at the track and, and decided that I wanted to race as well. Went to Frank Colley Drag Racing School. When he built his 50 speed Pro Mod, uh, it was a Corvette, uh, I actually hopped into the 67, drove that for about a year and a half. And then uh, with our sponsors that we had at the time, we were able to build a 63 Corvette Pro Mod at the time. We, so then we had two Pro Mods at the time, his and hers. Uh, so now we are down to what? Uh, we had, we ran um, some NHRA at the time. We had run some uh, national events. Uh, that uh, we were out for a couple of years there because uh, you know budgeting and that type of thing. So now we're back. We're back with only one car right now. We're hoping to get back to be a two-car team. Uh, we're fielding Stella, as I said. We are running now IHRA. Uh, it's IHRA Nitro Jam, pretty cool show, a lot of fun, and uh, had a runner-up finish in Cordova last week, uh, looking forward to uh, the President's Cup at MIR next week, and uh, it's uh, good stuff. I tell you what, that's the best looking Cadillac i ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, her name is Stella, and she's actually named after my grandma, uh, who was a... Um, Kind of a, uh, you know, hot, red-headed Italian. So oh, I gosh. think uh, we thought that that boat is pretty tall. Awesome. Good deal. Yeah, did you do some research there, Colin? Yep. Hey, uh, Dina, this is Colin, a local wedging car driver here in Virginia. Um, hey, Colin, don't go doing any research. Don't go digging anything up now. Come on. <laughs> um, why do you think there are a lot more females in drag racing than in NASCAR? You know, uh, because I don't think that NHRA, I mean, at this point, you know, we talk, we go back and talk about people like Shirley and uh, my good friend, Bunny Burkett, who was IHRA champion. She was IHRA funny champion, funny car champion in the 90s and has her 50th anniversary going on right now. Um, you know, we kind of never had that factor going on. You know, yeah, but good old boys club and that kind of thing. But I think it's kind of always... You know, there's never been that black, white, Spanish, his, hers. It's just kind of been like, can you drive it? Okay, good. Come on in. <laughs> and, you know, and if, you know, if the shoots come out and you get the wind light, then good for you. So, you know, I mean, it comes to the point, too, that, you know, people say, oh, you're a female driver. Yeah, you know, that's cool. When it comes to marketing, that's great because it kind of helps us. I think it gives us a little bit of an edge. But, um... 
it comes to driving, you know, when people say you're a good driver, that's kind of what I'd rather hear. No disrespect to what you just said, but, you know, that's kind of what I'd rather hear. You know, I'd rather hear the good driver than I'm a female driver, you know. And, uh, and I think that the car has no idea what I am. The car is like, you're sitting in the seat, you're driving me. I have no idea what the car is, so that's kind of really what it boils down to. You know, if you can drive it or you can't, does it really matter, you know, if you have for that, you know, which, you know, the Y chromosome or what? <laughs> Alina, does it, does it simply just get under your skin when latter-day, current-day journalists or media types like me always say that, well, Danica Patrick's the most successful female race car driver of all time when most of America, unfortunately, has forgotten about Shirley? Is that, is that well, sort of me? And this is no disrespect, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, no disrespect to Danica, she's really not the most successful, not most successful. Oh, I know, no, 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 I, I, I know that, and I, that's what I'm saying. Most of America, though, doesn't remember Shirley, they don't remember Lori Johns, they don't remember, you know, hardly anybody that hadn't been racing, say, within five years. So they automatically think that Danica is the best female racer of all time. Do you find that as a female drag racer, you've got to remind people that Shirley Muldowney took on the boys and the men in the fastest division known to man and beat them with regularity? Yeah, I absolutely do, which is probably why I spit out those names about two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is probably why I brought up Shirley's name and Bunny's name because, um, you know, I mean, it's we're on the internet, so this is cool. They're badass. You know what I'm saying? Like, they are... <laughs> before... And that was kind of before the time. And, you know, let's think... You know, and I can't think of names right now, but there were women, even in NASCAR days, back in Alabama, who were, like, some of the first ladies that... you People don't even know their names. If you do research, you'd be like, really? There were women? Yeah, and, and people don't even know it. So if you do some like some back research, there are some cool ladies. And then you know you talk about like um, you know like the F1 car. You talk about people like Janet Guthrie, and you know there's there's a lot of really cool ladies that I raced. You know now it's kind of it, unfortunately sometimes it comes down to some marketability as opposed to ability. You know we want to. You know, so we kind of want to be able to have both. You know, it's great. Like, I, our marketing partners, you know, we've had some, you know, we've had struggles trying to get the car out there and, and getting things done. You know, we're, we, we are technically a small team, you know, being me and my husband and I'm part one crew guy who, you know, we made it to the finals and unfortunately lost the final. But, um, you know, it was just my husband running a 3,000 horsepower car. You know, he literally put me in the car, the car, went to the starting line, and put me in the beam all by himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. you know, um, and our marketing partners are wonderful, and, and they stick by us, and they've stuck by us for many years. So, you know, it's, it, it's all about getting things to come together and, and the marketing partners and all that kind of stuff, too. How, how much of your time, or what percentage of your time, is spent on marketing and trying to get sponsors, and what percentage you spent on the actual getting the race car ready? My friend, that is a loaded question <laughs> because you know it, it's so much to it. We, I'm honest with you, you know, I'm not afraid to say it. We, I don't have a marketing person. Um, so, and my husband, you know, when we're home. My husband is working on the, the projects that we have in our Indycon performance shop, as well as then when he's done with that for the day, he's working on Stella, which was what he's still doing right now. <laughs> um, you know, and I've been catching on, up on stuff at home, planning things together, and, you know, we have to go racing next week, and, you know, still making my marketing phone calls and still doing our social media and getting all, all that kind of stuff together. So it's a million different hats. So, you know, and then cooking for the team because when we go out to the track, 
No, we uh, we eat some nice Italian meals after uh, you know after racing. Those boys eat some nice Italian meals, although I choose to eat peanut butter and jelly. That's kind of how it is. <laughs> Now, now, where's your team located? Where, where do y'all live? We're from New York originally, uh, but we're living in uh, Pennsylvania now. Okay. And you're racing this weekend where? Uh, next weekend, we will be at uh, Maryland International Raceway for the uh, HRA Nitro Jam uh, President's Cup. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite... Now, where is that? I'm not, I'm not sure where that race. I don't. I don't know where that race track is. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear all that you said. Where, where is it now? It's not this it's weekend. Maryland. Okay. It's okay. Next weekend. Okay. Maryland International Raceway. Oh, is it Bud's Creek? Yeah. Bud's Creek. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> you cross the big skinny bridge in from Virginia into Maryland, and there it is. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I know where it is. Yeah, the bridge is free. Not everybody knows Buzz Creek. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, if you said Buzz Creek, I'd have known exactly where you were. Okay. <laughs> Dina, yeah. he's old school. I mean, well, I mean really old I mean, school. Everybody knows Buzz Creek. <laughs> really old school. He was back racing, what, covering racing with Fred Flintstone. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, so you didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't jump in there when you told me that there were women racing NASCAR back in the early days. I didn't jump in there to tell you that I knew most of those ladies, or wrote about them, or talked to them, or met them. So, but I knew I knew where you were going. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, but it's. But my point was, it seemed like most of America thinks of people within the last five or six years as being great female racers. They don't go back very far. And Shirley was back then, and 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 Bunny Burkett, I believe, is from Virginia Beach. I think she's from Virginia, is that right? Yeah, Bunny, Bunny is in uh, Fredericksburg, yeah. Okay, I knew she's from Virginia somewhere. Yeah, Bunny, okay. Okay. She, she and my husband actually, when um, the gentleman who picked uh, Stella is in Fredericksburg as well, his name is Bruce Mullins, um, it, they surprised me with a handwritten from Bunny that is um, clear coded over on the uh, the driver's door of my car. So every time I get in my car, I get to see that nice inspirational note from Bunny. And that means a lot to me, it really does. You know, one thing about drag racing, it took me two minutes to figure it out, but other people don't understand. Y you can have a, a slower lapse time at a lower speed and still win the race. And people don't understand how that can be. And I always give them... Well, I always give them the story of if a school bus and a Lamborghini are at the same stoplight and the light turns green, and the school bus very slowly starts to move, and then the Lamborghini waits until the last second, the Lamborghini will get to the finish line running much, much faster, and it will have taken him much less time, but the school bus got there first. <laughs> You know, that's, that's a funny story. If anybody goes ahead and reads my uh, press release that I wrote about my runner-up finish at Cordova, um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I said I, I, I actually could have eaten a meatball sandwich and taken a nap before my car left the line. We, we run a converter, so we, we run a Bruno and a Loco, okay. and, um, but I actually leave off a clutch pedal. You know, you can leave off a button, but I kind of like to go old school. I, leave, I still leave off a clutch pedal. I shift. I like to shift. I don't want to give my time, my mind any time to wander. <laughs> and I, um, I, I, you know, I left off the clutch pedal. The car didn't go anywhere. Like, uh-oh. And finally, the car left. It was like a 500 light. I mean, seriously, like sandwich and a, and, you know, and a nap. And then finally, the car left. And by the numbers... I actually had Ruben down the track, but because of the 500 light, you know, he won. I watched him go past me, and then go you know, down the track. I actually wound up lifting because I, he, he, I mean, he had me at that point because, you know, my car never left the tree. So it was funny because they get people like, "Oh, she's taking a nap," you know, the announcers. Mm -hmm. And I know in my head, I'm, my, I, I know I, I could hear the words my husband was saying in my head. You know, what is the 
me. I really couldn't even repeat them on the internet right now because <laughs> <laughs> probably the SEC would come at me for that. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, then we later on realized that the pump to the poop, so the that's why uh, the car didn't leave the line. Now the IHRA. There you have it. Yeah, are y'all still running quarter mile? IHRA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are. There has been some discussion amongst NHRA people, and I talked to Don Garlitz about a year and a half ago, and he said, Garlitz said, he would never be satisfied with NHRA until they go back to a quarter mile. Do you guys feel a little bit, um, uh, do you feel safe going a quarter mile, whereas they only go a thousand feet over there? I mean, their nitro cars only go a thousand feet. Uh, is it is it okay uh, with you guys? All, all our classes run quarter mile. Uh, we feel very safe running quarter mile. Uh, I have to say, IHRA, an IHRA safety crew is second to none. They are absolutely amazing. Um, you know, we've had a couple of incidents. Um, you know, uh, a big shout out to Kale Aronson, who is recovering right now, and one of the Nitro Holly guys as well. Um, and their safety crew is great, and their track prep is really good. So, uh, you know, these cars, that's what we do. You know, there are eighth mile, um, you know, like PDRA run eighth mile. It's, you know, and I think it's all preference. I don't think for us that we need to cut anything back. I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, but, you know, it, it's, you know, of course, it's all up to the sanctioning bodies. But I think that. I think we're going to stay where we are. I don't know if there's any talk for us. Okay. Before we let you go, we want to let you know one thing. I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether you realize this, but in this area where we live is the home of Larry McBride, Spider-Man. Uh, yeah. Have you seen him run motorcycles at all on the IHRA tour? Uh, uh, yes, I have. <laughs> and, and he is certifiably crazy. To run 230 and 240 on a motorcycle, we know that, but um, he's incredibly popular in this part of Virginia and is still doing it at age whatever he is. So um, uh, he, he, he's kind of our local um, attraction, he's our connection to drag racing because we don't have many of them around here. Okay, we, we, we spend a lot of time in Virginia, so okay, yeah, huh. okay. Last question. After Bud's Creek, where do y'all go next? Um, that's a good question. I would have to refer to my calendar. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I think actually, I think uh, I think it, I think Grant ends after that. So. Um, okay. Canada. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe maybe hockey will be over by then. Uh, Roger, we got any questions? Any more questions? I was going to ask her over the ten years she's been racing. What's been the biggest changes she's seen in the cars and? Uh, in her racing career. Well, I asked her. Did you catch that, Dina? You know, I, I, the biggest change is, I, I think probably for me, the, the changes that, I don't know if it's the biggest, but the changes that I, I kind of don't like is, I wish we all, well, for me, I, I like the shifting, I like the driving the car, you know, now everything becomes kind of automatic. I kind of, I like to do stuff, so that's how I keep my car. You know, everybody kind of says to me, why do you bother shifting? Put an automatic shifter in there, button in there, you know? So everybody kind of wants to talk, everybody wants to talk me out of it, and, I, you know, it's kind of what I like to do. I think the best thing that I'm seeing is safety. We are, you know, at, we are improving safety as we go. I mean, just everything. We've just made some more improvements, even though my car is brand new, and we, we're still making improvements. And um, that's the best thing that we're seeing is just all the all the safety improvements, and they're just getting uh, better and better. And we're just going to continue to improve on them just to keep the driver safe. Is Bill Bader still the IHRA head man? Oh no. Okay. Well, the no. reason I asked that was they raced in Virginia up here in Petersburg for. A number of years, and I used to go up and, and cover that event for my newspaper. And I got to know Bill and his staff. And since they don't come up there anymore, I have not. Uh, I, I guess I lost track of Bill. I did not know he was no longer the head of IHRA. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I
Yeah, they, it's, um, IRG Group has has bought them, and then they have acquired some uh, some tracks. And um, it's uh, Jason Rittenberry, uh, Scott Gardner, who used to run Cordova, is now uh, helping to run IHRA. So they have a they have a really good group of people that that are running it. So um, people who know a lot about the sport, which is very helpful. You know, and again, like I said, you know, helping us safety-wise and that kind of thing. So, uh, and they and they put on a really good show for the fans. I mean, I have to say, we get we our fans turn. I don't tend to look in the stands. I'm in the car. I have no idea. But then when I've seen pictures, obviously, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the fans turnout is insane. When I see them when they're in the stands, you know, know that our pit areas are full. But when we actually see the stands, they're full, and we get a fantastic turnout. So. That's the best part is to know that the fans are there, and they're there so that last car don't go for the track. So it's really nice to see. Oh, um, so what do you think about the close uh, fan contact in drag racing, like, say, fan access to the pits and all that other kind of stuff? You know, that's what I say is the best thing, you know, especially, and it's not a knock to NASCAR at all. This is definitely my analogy. You know, I've been to NASCAR races, and you kind of need, like, that golden ticket to get into the garage. Um, I mean, I've been there, and it's cool, but not everybody can get there. You know, I, I love the fact that every ticket is a pit pass, you know, and for especially for our marketing partners, you know, and our marketing partners can be acting from something that's automotive-related to something that is, you know, it, it could be whatever, jewelry, it doesn't matter. You know, and they're up close with the brand and the logo, and we can... You know, we can talk to fans about it. They can ask us questions and shake our hands. And, you know, they can get a hero card signed right in front of them or get a T-shirt and get it signed and all that fun stuff. So it's so nice that they feel like they can be one-on-one with us. So, And I know that that's a lot of fun for them. I think, well, I think NASCAR is afraid that if, if fans... I think NASCAR garages are so much smaller... Than a than a drag racing paddock that they they don't they don't feel like they can let everybody in like you guys can because paddocks are generally much larger and much more spread out than than little garages so that might be part of the deal or NASCAR just doesn't want them down there the drivers and crew chiefs may not want around them having to deal with them that could be it I don't know. But they, they yeah, would, I don't really know the answer to you know, it. They would be, they would be good if they uh, would cultivate those people a little bit better. Well, Dina, I appreciate you being able to call in with us tonight. Go ahead and let you thank your sponsors real quick, and we'll let you get back on having your fun. Sure, I'll do the sponsor rattle. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we really want to thank NGK, LAT, DJ Safety, RC Auto, USA Auto Supply. Speedwire Systems, Hoosier, Crank It Media, they do a great job on our website. And uh, who else got? Photo Sports Unlimited and uh, CarChase.com. And that's about it. And we hope to see everybody at uh, IHRA Nitro Jam. All right, we'll have to keep up with you and catch you when you're in Virginia sometime. Yeah, come on out. Okay. All right, thanks so much. Good luck. Be safe. Thank you, guys. Take care. All right, bye bye. Hey CJ, how you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing good. I'll be late for my own funeral. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't get the memo. Yeah, you, you're late to your driver's meet. You're going to the back of the pack. Yeah, or you lose a lot of qualifying. One of the two. Yeah, you got to watch them. They keep wanting to change the rules again. I heard there's another one coming through before too long here. I, I know. I'm trying to keep up with it all, but uh, it's a little difficult at times, as you guys know. Oh, goodness. Anyway, go ahead and do a quick intro about yourself, uh, a little bit about your driving, racing career, rather, and uh, don't forget my pizza. <laughs> yeah, pizza's on the way. It's hot and ready. <laughs> go ahead. No, um, well, I, I got an opportunity from the JGL Racing. Um, I raced for them at Dover, actually. Uh, it was my debut in the Xfinity Series, and uh, you know, next thing you know, I, I finished 23rd in it. We started 37th, so uh, we moved to those positions during the race, and uh, we did really well. And uh, I'm not going to complain about it at all just because I've never been in one of those cars. And I've never even tested one before, so um, I guess since I, I did a good enough job, they uh, 
hired me back to race um, Michigan this weekend. Pretty exciting, actually. Cool. Now, well, now you, you clearly started somewhere before you started Infinity. <laughs> Tell us about your your younger years. Your, I mean, you must have been a go-kart <laughs> racer, and maybe late models or whatever. Kind of start at the beginning. Yeah, well, I, uh, I started racing go-karts when I was about four and a half years old. And uh, it was a passion instantly, and I fell in love with it. Uh, next thing you know, um, I, I kind of moved up from there to, you know, like a, the micro sprints and then the big block modifieds and the dirt late models and uh, asphalt late models, uh, then to the K&N uh, series and uh, the truck series and now the Xfinity. So, um, you know, and just, uh, I'm only 21 years old, so in just that short amount of time, I mean, I really moved up a lot through the racing ranks and, um, you know, I, I'm appreciative of all the opportunities that I've been given along the way. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, one of the biggest things in my career was that uh, you get to a stopping point, basically. Like, after I made it to, like, the big block modified, I was like, okay, you know, uh, you know, this is as far as we could probably go. And then we just kept uh, progressing up the ladder. Uh, you know, now I kind of look back on it, and I was like, man, I, I should have never doubted myself because I kept on trying. But, uh, you know, from go-karts to the Xfinity, it was, uh, it's, a, it's been a learning curve all the way up here, that's for sure. You never stop learning. Hey, uh, CJ, this is Colin Brown, a local electric car driver here in Virginia. Um, how, impo how important is it to run well in order to gain sponsors, which would allow you to ha hopefully help run a full uh, schedule? Well, um, running well definitely helps, um, you know, get sponsorship and whatnot. But the main thing that a sponsor looks for um, is not results, believe it or not. They're looking for somebody who can absolutely just, you know, market the, the crap out of their product or service or business. And um, it took me a couple of years to realize that. And uh, now, like, whenever I put, like, a marketing deck or, or a platform together for a sponsor, um, it's, I'm doing way more for them than any other driver has ever done before. So I, I kind of had to look at it like sponsorship stuff to come by. And, uh, you know, results do help you sell sponsors. But uh, if you get out of the car and do an interview and you can't talk in front of a microphone, or you don't have the right marketing deck around you, um, you know, you kind of shoot yourself in the foot. So, uh, but it, it's important. Results are important. Uh, you know, nobody wants to sponsor a car on and you know, 30 minutes late every week. But, uh, you know, I think um, if you can get a sponsor any way you can get it these days, you just got to go after it for sure. Um, do you feel like your team is in position to compete with some of the well-funded teams? Right now, at the moment, no. Um, and they would probably tell you that up front too. Uh, we have very, very good equipment, um, but we're working with Toyota right now um, to get us, uh, you know, some more wind tunnel time and on the pull down rig that they've got and use more of their technology. Uh, once, um, you know, this is a fresh team out of the box. I mean, they've only been racing for a year and a half, so uh, it's kind of hard for Toyota to be like, yeah, here's all of our full support, all of our goodies here, have at it. Um, so that's kind of what we're working towards. We're just trying to produce, you know, results right now, showing them that, you know, we're working towards a um, finishing good every week. And, um, you know, hopefully at the end of the year they might come up to us and, and want to help us out even more. So there's only really one more step that we need that's probably, you know, more wind tunnel time and uh, a little bit more motor. And uh, I think we'll be uh, right there contending with them. How, how important or not important maybe was the K&N series to your career? Was that, was that a pretty big, pretty big step? It was, um, I, if I could uh, basically summarize it, um, I think the K&N series was uh, a crucial part in uh, my career. I really do. Just for the simple fact that it taught me, um, you know, you go to some of the same tracks that the Cup and Nationwide Truck do, so, uh, you can you can learn the track, uh, learn what to expect. Um, you know you can learn from the speed that you're carrying in through the corner. There's just so many variables that you can learn from the K&N, and I think it NASCAR is doing a fabulous job at you know keeping that as a development series. You know they're not letting the Cup drivers and you know nationwide drivers step down into the K&N and you know wax everybody. So um, it's a good development series, and it helped me out a ton. It really did. Now, if you're you're running 
Xfinity and you will be against a bunch of guys this coming Saturday. And I have not seen the entry list, but I would imagine there's probably half a dozen cup guys in that field. There's always been the age-old debate about should cup drivers be in lower division races. A, a lot of lower division drivers say we want them there because we learn from them. Others say we don't need them there because it's taking away a position I could be finishing better. What do you think? Are, well, you, are you glad to see those guys? I have a strong, weak opinion about this. I, I'm kind of, I'm in between, I'm hot and cold. I see both sides of it and I totally understand it. Um, but that series was not, uh, the series was not made and built for a cut driver to step down in, uh, you know, to the Xfinity and particularly the race. Um, I agree with it because if I was a cup driver, I'd want as much track time as I could get. And, you know, it would be a lot easier to win a race in, in the Xfinity than it would be a cup. But um, if, if it were my series and I had NASCAR, I never will, though. Um, but uh, this is what I would do. I would limit each cup driver. Uh, you, you get, like, two to four races a year that you get to pick from. It's not every week that you can step down into the series or every other week and, um, you know, whip up on the guys. So you need to... Going back to the results thing, you know, if you're winning some races and you're marketable, that's an easy sell for a sponsor. It really is. So, um, but then again, your sponsor here to look at it like, hey, you compete against Kyle Busch, you Kevin Harvick, you Casey Kane. So, um, you know, I, I don't think you can really tell them not to do it because it, it draws such a crowd that, you know, the fans pack the stands. So, uh, you know, it's like I said, I'm 50 50 on that deal. Do I wish they raced in them? Yeah, because I can learn a lot from them. But, uh, you know, also, I mean, at Dover, I could have probably finished 18th or 17th if there were all the cup drivers in there. So, um, you know, not complaining, but I'm just saying, like, that, you know, that's the fact. But from the Speedway's point of view, if, if those so-called big names are not there on Saturday, are people going to be there Saturday? Are the fans going to be there Saturday? I mean, uh -huh. you, ever, you know, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a tough it's situation, over. isn't it? I think they overthink it, to be honest with you. I think the tracks in NASCAR overthink it, um, you know, mainly because uh, race fans are diehard race fans. They go there the race weekend and camp out to watch racing. Um, you'll probably draw a couple hundred more people into the stands just if you have some name drivers like Kevin Harvick or Kyle Busch races. But one day, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick are going to have to retire so, you, yeah, I think what they need to do is kind of make the Xfinity Series a series to where, you know, you develop and groom some of these drivers to become the next Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick and, and grow their fan base. I think it should be, uh, you know, kind of like a building block process for them. Um, but like, like I said, I, race fans go there to watch races, and they're going to, you know, hopefully pick out a driver that they might not know and that they like. And, uh, you, you know, there you got a fan forever. So, um it's a tough and touchy situation, really is. Um, hey, CJ, it's Colin. Uh, what tracks do you have the best chance at, and which ones will be the biggest challenge? Uh, well, Dover is always one of my best tracks. I've almost won three races there. Unfortunately, something catastrophic out of my control happens that uh, kind of puts us out of win. Uh, I'd say Dover will be my best shot there. We finished 23rd. Um, but I've never been to Michigan before, so this is going to be a totally new ball game for me. I think we're going to be running 200 mile an hour getting into the corners, and uh, it's going to be different. You know, you got to use the draft a little bit here, so, um, you know, this is another one of those things that's kind of being uh, not thrown to the fire, so to speak, but uh, I'm being thrown a learning curve, and I'm excited for it, yet um, kind of interested to see how we'll do. And um, I can't really say I'm nervous, but uh, I'm more anxious than, than anything, I guess. And um, how many of the tracks you will go to this year do you have experience on? Uh, we'll go to um, New Hampshire, uh, Bristol, Dover, Kentucky, um, and Texas. Uh, there, there's a, a pretty big little handful of them, I guess you'd say. Um, but for the most part, I probably haven't seen you know 80% of the racetracks. So um, you know, if we continue this deal with JGL, which I hope we do, um, you know, hopefully I'll get to learn a lot this year and, uh, you know, obviously produce results that they keep me in the car. And, um, 
you know, maybe next year we can hit it full swing, start the date owner and, and run complete. Let's see if we can do it, you know. When when you get to Michigan uh, tomorrow or Friday or whatever, who would you go to and ask about the racetrack? What drivers would you uh, would you go to for information and advice? Uh, that's a tough question. Um, I'll probably lean on my teammate JJ Yaley. He's had a lot of experience. He's been there many many times. Uh, he's very good at Michigan. Um, so I, I think I'd probably lean on JJ a lot. You know, he's going to feed you the right information. He's not going to steer me in the wrong direction. So, um, you know, I think I'm going to lean on JJ a lot. And then I'll probably go to someone like a Kevin Harvick who runs really well there. Uh, you know, just take his brain a little bit. So, I mean, it's all about socializing with those guys and, uh, you know, learning each weekend about what makes that tack trick or the track tick, sorry. And, um, you know, hopefully we can produce a good result out of it. But, you know, you're right, you got to go and, and hobnob with those guys and um, get as much information as you can because I'm going into a blind, really. Roger, what else do we need with him? Well, the uh, bad part is we're running out of time for him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I know. <laughs> CJ, I always like to get and, and have good long conversations with you, but I know we got running behind a little bit already from the get-go. Uh, make sure you tell JJ we said hi. We have to get him back on the show sometimes too. Okay, cool. But anyway, I give him a holler for y'all, and I appreciate you guys having me on the show as always. All right, we'll do a quick so shout out to your sponsors. Can't forget those guys. Oh yeah, well we don't have a sponsor on the car this weekend, so um, yeah, I'm mainly going to thank my regular people: Little Caesars, Delaware Auto Exchange, Real Eyewear, um, and obviously JGL Racing, uh, Greg Mixon, and Dave Whitener for. Uh, even considering me putting uh, me in the car. So that's a pretty cool deal. I'm really happy and excited for it. And I, I just got to get a thank you to them. I, I wouldn't be anywhere where I am today without them. So got to thank them. Cool. All right, we'll catch you and good luck. Hey, thank you all. All right. All right. We now have Jesse. Jesse, how you doing tonight? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody and uh, give us a little rundown on your racing career um, and a little bit of background about yourself, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, well first of all, you know, thank you for having me on the show tonight. It's going to be uh, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, pretty much with my uh, racing career, so I, I would say, you know, it, it's a lot different than a lot of folks, you know. Um, a lot of people started racing, you know, when they're a lot younger, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, go karting or you know bandoleros or you know whatever you know however they started um me i had a kind of different track um you know when i was younger we didn't have the money to race so um you know i was playing football and then running track you know through middle school and high school and then got recruited to play football at the naval academy um so i took that offer and went to naval academy uh, played there all four years um, graduated in uh, 2010 and was commissioned as a surface worker officer so, you know, started serving my time as an officer. We had a five-year commitment. And, um, you know, while I was doing that, you know, that's when I started, you know, being able to make a little bit of money and have some extra money on the side to start doing some of the stuff I really like to do, which was uh, racing. So I started uh, drag racing. I had bought a uh, Dodge Challenger that I used to take out to local drag strips, um, you know, in the areas that I was stationed at. And, you know, I've been stationed at in, uh, in California here for the last uh, five years. And um, started racing, drag racing, and uh, doing different competitions, building up the car, adding more power. Um, you know, broke a few records, and that allowed for me to get a lot of great exposure uh, through different magazines and things like that. So um, I was featured in High Rod Magazine twice. I was on the cover of Mopar Max Magazine. I was doing a lot of great things, which uh, led me towards uh, road course racing because I figured, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm pretty good, you know, going in a straight line, but I want to be able to go left and right. You know, so I started road course racing with the Corvette, you know, learning some different car control skills and things like that. And then at that point, I just I just really loved what I was doing, really loved the racing thing. I was like, you know what, I want to make this a career with things. So um, I had randomly ran into a guy um, who was running for uh, Performance T1 Motorsports over here in, uh, in uh, Southern California. And there's a stock car team out here running at uh, Irwindale Speedway. And uh, the guy's name was uh, Kyle Wisner, and he uh, introduced me to the team owner. Uh, Joe Nava, and uh, I did a test with them with the F2 car out here. I uh, did pretty well, and they pretty much told me, like, hey, you know, if you want to come out here for the 2015 season and run, we can do that. Well, I was like, great, you know, let me do that. So um, right after that, I had to go on deployment, which was my last deployment. Went over to the Arabian Gulf. I was out there for about uh, five months, and then came back. Right when I came back, a team owner came up to me and told me, 
hey, you know, instead of running the S2 car for the season in the SRL series, let's run a late model in the uh, NASCAR Wimbledon All American series. So, you know, I couldn't pass up that opportunity, even though I've never circle track raced in my life. You know, and it, actually at that point, I had never wheel to wheel race, period, in my life. Um, <laughs> that, and um, it's been pretty good so far. So, I was getting a lot of great support from, you know, fan, uh, friends, family, uh, different supporters out there. Also, um, you know, Naval Academy alumni, they've been helping me out a lot. You know, people who graduated back in the day, you know, 80s, 90s, they've been giving me a lot of support, you know, connecting me to the right people, helping me try to, you know, get funds and things like that. I did a, uh, did a crowdfunding campaign to help fund the uh, second race weekend. And that was a lot of great support from a lot of different people. I did the campaign with uh, Dark Horse Pros, and they, they pretty much catered towards extreme sports, racing, and things like that. You know, unlike, uh, you know, GoFundMe or Kickstarter, you know, they're, they're more catered towards, like, you know, sports like racing and things like that. So that was pretty awesome. And now we're going into the uh, third race weekend coming up here uh, next weekend on June 20th. And uh, we've got a lot of great competitors coming out there. Each race weekend is a full uh, car field. I mean, the first race weekend we had 20. Uh, second race weekend we had 22 cars. This race weekend, like, you know, we should have just as many again. So... It's been pretty awesome, and it's been a crazy journey. But uh, yeah, this is you know my rookie season, and it's going pretty well so far. And yeah, I'm just kind of doing, doing my thing. So let me let me get this straight. You played four years at Navy, right? Yes, sir. Never lost Army in four years. Uh oh. Never lost Army. Never lost the Air Force. Won the Commander in Chief Trophy all four years, and got to meet the President. You know, all four years. That's pretty cool. You know, of all, yeah. of, hey, listen, of all the guests we've had on this show through the years, you are by far, without question, the, the most educated, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're the top of the heap, man, I tell you, you are. You are the top of the heap. <laughs> and if you ever get to be a great race car driver, they'll wonder who that Roger Staubach guy was. Yeah. They'll say, let me see, Staubach, Bellino, and this kid that races cars, that's... You'll be one of the. You'll be on one of the the Mount Rushmore of Navy athletes. <laughs> you and Dave, you and David Robinson, and Stallback and and Bellino will be on the Mount Rushmore of, of Navy athletes. That's a Roger. This is cool that you got him on. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, let yeah, me let me ask you this now. And, and, and I've been I've been covering this sport a long time. Do you, and I asked a lot of people the same question. Do you do you have a timetable or a, a a schedule at which point you want to be somewhere along the line? I mean, you started late, obviously, so you're a little bit behind the 18 and 19 year olds. Um, have you set a schedule, Jesse, for where you want to be when you want to be there? Uh, yes, sir. I have actually. Um, I'm very very goal oriented, so you know, everything I do, um, I first. You know, I find out, you know, when something interests me and I want to get to the top, I just set it as a goal. Once I set it as a goal, that pretty much opens up my mind to every single idea possible to get there. And I start scheduling timelines, like you said. So um, right now, my timeline is, you know, to, this year, the big thing for this year is establishing a competitive resume. So uh, I want to I get in as many races as possible for the late models. Um, I want to get as much exposure as possible, you know, with what I'm doing, especially... Um, you know, with my situation being, you know, uh, like a member of the military, active duty, you know, African-American also, you know, that combination together just hasn't been seen in that part before. So, um, you know, I got that going for me, which is awesome. But, yeah, timeline-wise, you know, running late models this year, um, I actually just recently got approved to be able to move up to the K&N series uh, whenever I'm ready. So that was pretty awesome to hear that news uh, last week. And then, um, so I just want to run uh, K&N just after this. Um, run some races, you know, do well there, get the experience, and then from there move up, you know, either run truck series or Xfinity. So I want to be doing that by, I mean, if I can make that happen by the end of next year or the year after that, um, that's the goal. It sounds crazy, it sounds tough, but um, in my life I know with hard work and dedication, and as long as I put my mind to it, I can make it happen, no matter how crazy or impossible it may seem. So, so, uh, uh, make it happen. Yeah, are you still on active duty now, or are you out? Yes, I'm currently active duty right now. Um, I'm still working in the Navy. Um, I'm not on sea duty anymore. I already did my first two uh, sea tours, but uh, now I'm on shore duty. 
um, working at uh, Naval Postgraduate School up in uh, Monterey, California, which is nice because it, it, it gives me more time to be able to do this, you know, especially on the weekends, because before when I was on the ship, you know, we used to go underway, um, you know, I to see to do different training things, you know, operations and things like that. So, you know, I'd, I'd be home for a few weeks and then out for a few weeks and home for a few weeks and that, that really hurt when it came to trying to get as much experience as I could racing. But now this year where I'm not going out to see anymore, um, I can actually, you know, put a lot more focus into it and really, you know, drive hard. Now that's a language school at Monterey. Are you in that program? Um, so they have two schools over here. They have DLI, which is a, a defense language and uh, they mainly deal with uh, languages and things like that. Um, NPS, they have some too, but uh, I, uh, I'm i actually working at NPS instead of uh, going to school. So I'm on like the other side of things, I'm on the staff. Okay, but you're not far from Laguna Seca. Um, okay. I actually live, I think, exact, I timed it out exactly 25 minutes from Laguna Seca. Because I was there a month ago watching the uh, IMSA cars race. Yeah, yeah, they were here. Actually, I was actually there that weekend too. But we may have passed by. Yeah, so yeah, even yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was there on Saturday. You know, it's too bad you can't get stationed over here in Norfolk or Newport News or somewhere because there's a there's a weekly short track here called Langley Speedway, and Langley has a K and N race in two weeks, and they've got a terrific they've got a terrific late model program. I mean, they get great car counts. Late model racing over here is a, is a big, big deal. If you ever get stationed on the East Coast and get stationed anywhere near Norfolk or Virginia Beach or wherever, you, you would you would have a great place to race on Saturday nights in late models. So, you know, if you come over this way, you, you got to jump on Langley. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've heard of Langley, too. I've heard of all the tracks over there. They're pretty, pretty good. I mean, late model racing over there is huge. And I think it's definitely growing over here too. Especially, it's nice because you know I'm racing at Irvingdale. Irvingdale pretty much are I, I think it's the number one. Oh, it's um, a show place. Short track. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's the number one short track to me out here in the west on the west coast. So it's awesome. A lot of great fans. A lot of great drivers. Um, the competitors we're going against every week. I mean, these guys, guys and girls, are amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm learning a lot from them, watching them. And uh, yeah, there is just great. It's really great racing out here. Hey, uh, Jesse, this is Colin Brown, a local electric car driver here uh, in Virginia. Um, what, skills, yeah. what skills have you learned from different forms of racing that have helped you in the late models? Um, yeah, so um, coming from the drag racing and uh, road course world, um, at least drag racing, drag racing is what I did pretty much the uh, majority of my time when it came to racing. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it's only going in a straight line or it's easy. And it, it, it is easy if you have maybe a 200 or 300 horsepower car, but uh, I had built my car up to, it was actually making about 980 uh, horsepower to the wheel. So it was making almost 1100 to the motor. Um, so it was a pretty powerful car. So because of that, traction was always an issue no matter what kind of tires threw on there. Um, so uh, with that, you know, I really learned when it came to, like, you know, modulating your foot and throttle control so that you get the best traction and get going as quick as possible um, without, you know, spinning the tires. And you, you pretty much can take that same concept to any type of racing period when it comes to throttle control, you know. A lot of people think you just mash the gas and just go. Well, you know, depending on the power of the car and how it's set up, you know, some cars you might be able to do that, but not a lot, especially... You know, when, when it comes to like the late model racing, when you're coming out of a turn, you want to get on a throttle as quick as possible, but if you get on it too quick and you don't have the car pointing in the direction you want, you could end up, you know, pulling a full 360, coming around a turn. Uh, generally on this program, I always bring up food. And I've got to ask you, now first of all, where are you from originally? Yeah, so um I mean where were you born and reared and, and where would you where were you brought up? So I was born and raised in uh, Dallas, Texas. My okay. uh okay. Uh, ethnically, I'm Nigerian, so my parents were uh, they, my parents were actually born and raised in Nigeria and then immigrated to the US in uh the eighties. And okay. that's where they had you know, when they came to the US they went to Texas, they had me, my two brothers and my sister. But I pretty much grew up majority of my life in uh Texas. Okay, so you're in Southern California now, so you have access almost on any corner to In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, In-N-Out. I 
I'm not a huge fan of in and out though. Oh, oh man, Texas, see, I you just, just you know, no, man. This, this is the thing, though. Being from Texas, you know, I think I would be, I would be a traitor if I said that in and out was better than Whataburger. Than Whataburger. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whataburger is the best. I know. Well, burger out there. I don't know. I know there's a lot of burger in Denton that I go to when I'm in town for the NASCAR races, but when I go out west two or three times a year or twice a year, in and out burger, you got it. You just got to do it. But anyway, well, listen. You served your country. You beat Army four years. We'll excuse you that little misstep. All right. Um, and, and it was interesting. And I don't know that you you don't know me, but you did call me sir. Which is a cool thing because I was an army captain in Vietnam, so I deserve a few oh, serves. I deserve a yeah, few yeah, serves yeah, in my yeah. life. But, uh, thank you for your service. Thank you well, for your thank service. You. Listen, I want to ask you this now. How much longer do you expect to stay in? Um, so right now on my uh, contract, I mean, pretty much till the end of this, uh, I pretty much have until the end of this uh, short duty. So I, I, should be, I should be transitioning out on the early part of uh, 2017. So you can be a race car driver full time before you're 25 or six, something like that. Um, actually, I would be 28 by then. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. I would, that, that's a, that's the goal. That's the goal. Right when I transition out, to go full blown no, uh, NASCAR and uh, just run as a professional driver. I, I I believe I can say with some degree of certainty because I've been doing this a long time. You will get opportunities that a lot of people won't get and, and it's understandable because you paid your dues and if you if you can be at the right place at the right time and shake the right hands you 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 got a career believe me uh, oh, yeah definitely definitely yeah and it's, it's just a huge blessing you know i'm a super super you know spiritual guy you know i pray every night and believe in god and um yeah i, I really believe you know um all things are possible you know and um yeah definitely you know, I've been around the world, you know, with the Navy, you know, been on two deployments to, you know, the, the Arabian Gulf, totaling out to, you know, over 15 months, and, um, you know, done a lot of things, so, it's, yeah, I know that, you know, a lot of people racing in this sport started out when they're younger, they were 15 years old when they started doing weight models, or 16, or something like that, well, you know, or they're 20, so I'm third, I'm early 20 when I did it, but for me, I didn't have the opportunity, because, one, I didn't have the money back then, but two, you know, I was doing something for the greater good, you know, and that's just going out there serving the country. And now that I'm not, you know, out there on the scene anymore, now that I'm down back on the shore, um, you know, now I'm able to, you know, spend my time, um, you know, really going really hard with the racing thing. If let me let me just give you one piece of advice, if I may. If you if you can arrange it, you should try to get a weekend pass or get off the weekend that the NASCAR series comes to Phoenix at the end of November. Um, I believe if you came to Phoenix to the racetrack and spent a day or so and introduced yourself to some people like Joe Gibbs or Rick Hendrick or Jack Roush or Brian France, I think your career might, I, I, I honestly truly believe you might move a little quicker than you hope you will. If you could be there and introduce yourself to people and let them see what you're all about. I think that would be very, very important. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think that I think that's a that's a great idea too. And uh, I'm definitely trying to make it down there also to um, NASCAR. They're coming out here to Sonoma, which is on you know about three and a half hours north of me. So oh, I'm that's right. Yeah, be there that whole weekend. Yeah, so I'll be up there that whole weekend. Um, I'll be in the pits and everything, just meeting people. I actually came out to the uh, I came out to the Auto Club 400 uh, race. Uh, Fontana earlier on this year, and that was pretty awesome because uh, I was in the pits. I got to meet um, Penny Hamlin. Um, I got to shake his hand, take a take picture with him, and everything. But yeah, now meeting people, networking with the right people is huge, and that's uh, it's one thing that's helped me a lot um, doing that. It's gotten me a lot of great exposure. I've met a lot of great people, and I'm receiving a lot of great support. You know, whether it's mentorship or just connecting me to more and more people who. You know, eventually one day something good will, you know, come with it and, you know, someone could have their name on my car, you know, or, or anything like that, you know, to help. So, um, you know, definitely looking forward to that. And, um, you know, being the right people is huge. Uh, networking is just it's phenomenal. 
Hey Jesse, I got uh, one more question. Um, what are you doing to promote yourself and make contacts in order to advance your career? Um, some of the big things, so I'm really huge on uh, social media and I'm really huge on just face to face meeting people. Um, my big thing is um, I, I'm, I'm friendly with everybody. Wherever I go, if you ever see me, I have the biggest smile on my face. I'm always, you know, talking to people and uh, just being the best person I can be towards everyone. Because you never know that one person who's going to be the person who's going to connect you to someone and then it, it goes huge, you know. Um, and, and just social media, too, is huge. You know, everybody's on it. Everyone's on Facebook. Everyone's on Twitter. Everyone's on Instagram. So my big thing is keeping a very positive attitude on all of those uh, platforms. Um, everything I do is positive. You know, I will never, I will post anything negative. If I, if I go into a race and I have a, it's not even gonna go on social media because it, 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 it's just not. You know, if it's not positive, then I'm not putting it out. You know, and um, it, it, I think it's really huge because a lot of people like, you know, a lot of people who follow me on on a different platform, uh, they always, you know, they always commend me. They always come back and message me and say, hey, you know, I love following your pictures, your videos, posts, and everything because everything you do is so positive. It just brings a, a nice little light to my day, and that's what I want to do. I want to be somebody who's inspiring to people and you just lead people to basically chase their dreams and be whatever they want to be in life. You know, because you know, if you can believe in someone, you can help them out. You can just be that positive light in someone's life, it just, it, it's huge on people, it's huge. That's terrific. I, th I think, uh, you're going to be around a long time. I think you're going to be around okay. a long time. I, I sure hope I live long enough to see you on a cup car. That would be fun. Thank but, you, thank you. That's the goal. <laughs> you know, and if I'd beat Navy, if I'd beat an Army four years running, I'd be smiling too. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thanks for being on our program. Um, and, and thank you for your continuing service, and uh, it's exciting to hear somebody on this program that, uh, that has something in mind for his life more than just running late models at a weekly track somewhere. So uh, I, th I think you're going to do well. I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting you someday and following your career. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I'm just you know, trying to do as much as I can you know, to really get myself out there, get the people out there that are supporting me too. And, uh, you know, just make it to the top. You know, it's a long road. It's a tough road. But, you know, you know, with the support of a lot of people, you know, help from God, too. Um, you know, I think, I think it's made it to the top. All right. Thanks so much. Go get an in and out burger. <laughs> <laughs> or some water burger. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks so much. All right. Have a good one. Take good night. How you doing tonight, Scott? Good. How are you guys? Oh, we're just having a good fun time doing laps. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, give uh, everybody a quick shout out about uh, where you started, uh, what you're doing now. Uh, somebody that hasn't met you can learn something about you. Well, I'm originally from uh, from Connecticut. Grew up running around uh, the kind of the short tracks of New England, and then um, in 1999, I moved down here to North Carolina after my brother. Uh, years after him and uh, you know from from race team to race team from home to here which has been 25 years of racing. Cool. How do you like being with the uh, 11 team? Um, this will be our first year together and uh, you know we started off really well had first three races went went very well we had good speed and uh, we, we kind of had a tough week at uh, Kansas, we ran really well and run forth and somebody's wheel, uh, windshield tear off came off their windshield and covered our grill 100%. We burned an engine up and it uh, seems like after that we've had a few weeks of bad luck, but uh, I, feel, I feel confident and positive we're on the right track. We'll get it turned, turned back around and hopefully go to St. Louis this weekend and at uh, Gateway have a really good run. Good deal. Hey, uh, Scott, it's Colin Brown here, local legend car driver in Virginia. Um, How are you doing? What's the uh, pressure like being being a crew chief for a member of the France family? Uh, that's a good question. Probably the biggest question I get all the time these days. Um, you know, it's, there's no more pressure than, um, you know, anybody else. Uh, 
you know, a top name driver, uh, I think the biggest thing is you, do, you just don't want to mess up, you know? You got to do all, all the obvious things correctly at all times. And uh, and if you do that in racing or just in life, I think you're, you'll be pretty successful. So um, they don't put a lot of pressure on us because, you know, Ben's racing career is completely separate from, from NASCAR business. So, um, but... But you know that they're there, you know they're watching, and you know, uh, you know you better not mess something up, and you'll get a phone call for sure. Um, what kind of advice do you get from uh, your brother regarding weekly changes? Or challenges? Um, you know, we really don't uh, chat a lot about that stuff anymore. Um, you know, we grew up racing together, and um, as you get older, you realize when you leave when you leave your work, you just kind of want to leave your work. So we we hang out, we talk about uh, kids and, and deer hunting and and whatever, you know, is on our mind at that particular time. It's, we don't really, we try not to really spend too much time talking about race cars because it, it actually gets kind of exhausting after uh, 30 years of it, you know. But, you know, he's there for me if I need, if I need advice and, and uh, vice versa, but... Um, you know the vehicles are so much different. There's not a lot of uh, not a lot of technology we can trade back and forth from a, a truck to a car. Scott, how difficult is it to maintain a team's momentum or team's attitude when you run the season opening race and then you don't race again for a month and then you skip two three weeks? I mean, is it difficult? Uh, obviously, you'd like to race more, but how tough is it to keep your focus when you're not racing very often? Um, I, I think it's harder, honestly. Um, I noticed that, you know, I've been nationwide racing for the past uh, six or seven years, and, you know, we'd run, we'd run 15 or 18 races in a row, and we were just on a roll. And then when you stop and get a weekend off, you gotta you got to get the guys back back in that that normal routine and rhythm at the racetrack when you make changes. So it, it's difficult and on truck series I think it's even even more difficult because we have uh, multiple weekends in a row off. So it and, and the other thing is the truck schedule is, you know, we're gonna show up at Gateway, get two and a half hours of practice, two hours later qualify and then a few hours after that we're gonna race. So there's not a lot of time for for uh, any issues, major problems, or for that matter, even making a small mistake, you know? Well, are there places you guys don't go that you would like to go if NASCAR gave you the right to make a schedule? What would you add to the schedule, or what would you take off? Uh, the first thing I do is I get rid of Eldora. I think it's an absolutely ridiculous thing to go... Uh, race a truck on dirt. Um, I love dirt racing, but I don't, it, for us to build a dirt truck, spend all that money for one race, it just doesn't, it's just not a good, a good fit for our business model, you know, it's too expensive. Um, I would probably add a Speedway race July 4th to Daytona. Um, that's always a huge fan favorite. And I would, uh, I would love to see Watkins Glen or, uh, Road America, some more road course racing. It, it makes more sense because, uh, you know, we have one road course race, but we have to build two or three road course trucks just to have spares, you know, and it's so expensive. Um, so it, the owners kind of get uh, a little nervous when you have a $100,000 vehicle and you only run it one time, where when you build a new short track truck, we run it five, six times. So I think we need to have multiple races for each type of uh, each type of racetrack. Yeah, the 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 Cup drivers seem to be trying to put together certainly not a union. That's not a word NASCAR would like to hear. But Cup drivers are trying to put together a, a bit of a drivers' council uh, to present grievances or suggestions. Have you heard anything about the possibility of your series getting together and selecting five or six drivers to kind of be the representative? for the whole tour? No, I, I haven't. I don't think the Truck Series drivers have enough clubs to, to pull that off. Um, 
I think if the ownerships, the owners got together and had some kind of a council, they might be able to, uh, I think, but um, you got to be careful. You got to tread lightly on all that stuff, you know. Um, but I think, I think, I think the, the uh, I think we're going to see some good things changing in, in the near future because NASCAR, for some reason, has been more open to suggestions and changing what the teams and drivers are suggesting than they ever have before. So I think uh, I think it's on a good good path right at the moment. Hey, I don't Scott. think you can force that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Hey, uh, Scott, it's Colin Brown again. Um, how much does a uh, teammate's success help you prepare your truck setups and driver development? I'm sorry, you asked me about Timothy? Uh, yes. Um, you know, uh, we, we look, I look at their stuff. I look at what they, what they ran last year at certain racetracks. Um, we, you know, we, we have competition meetings with both drivers and Timothy's crew chief. Uh, every week we meet at the racetrack, so we share everything, and we try to work as close together as we possibly can. The, the driving styles are a bit different, and the rules this year are, are a lot different than they were last year for the trucks, even in some small, small areas. So um, last year's setups don't seem to be working at all, even for Timothy. So we're, um, we're constantly searching and looking outside of our box to try to find the next great trick, uh, not trick, so to say, but the next the next setup or uh, direction to go in. And it's pretty much all due to uh, the tire changes that they make. And, you know, that changes the entire setup. And uh, how do you coach your driver before, during, and after the race? How would I set them? How would you coach them up? Oh, how I coach him up. Um, Ben's really smart. He's a very intelligent kid. He, he absorbs whatever I tell him. I, uh, you know, we, we debrief after practice and uh, before qualifying and race. I, uh, I go through my routine and I list all of the things that we, all the set of changes that we made in practice and uh, how we ended practice and how we're going to start the race so he can visually see what's the same and what's different and we kind of talk our way through that to give him some confidence and then we talk about the race the line um you know how race traffic and what the what the characteristics or the idiosyncrasies of that particular racetrack or uh tire does and we just kind of work through it from there Got, got a, it's no different than trying to uh, it's no different than trying to coach. I would say uh, you know a, a football team or a baseball team. You, you gotta you gotta motivate everybody is a little bit different, but they all need uh, we all need a little bit of uh, coaching, you know. Mm -hmm. Not not to shift uh, too much of gears off of racing. I know you support some of the charities out there because I know uh, some of the stuff you go through with your daughter. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm a big supporter of any pediatric cancer foundation or charity. I've seen you've raised uh, quite a bit of money. I, th I think you should uh, get people to donate some money for every deer you get because it looks like you like to do a lot of deer hunting too. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, that's my passion outside of uh, outside of racing. If I'm not playing with my kids, um, I'm in the tree stand somewhere all winter long trying to get my mind right and uh, enjoy Mother Nature. Um, I would just like everybody to donate something, a little bit of something for, uh, for our kids that are fighting uh, cancer all over the country. And uh, they desperately need uh, funding for research so, so we can put this uh, horrible disease to bed and get the kids a fair chance, you know? Yeah, I, I would love to see that myself. All right, well, we'll go ahead and let you get back to the family, whether whether it be NASCAR or the regular one. And like, well, I appreciate it, guys. Good luck this weekend. Good luck this weekend at, at Gateway. Good luck. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, we'll talk to you again later, Scott. Okay, anytime. See you guys. All right, bye.
Okay, Raj. Yeah, I, I did want to get that in because see. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, Absolutely. He's he. I, I was sitting here reading. He's, he raised some good fair amount of money. Uh, they had one of the him and one of the drivers. They had something going on, and he raised like twenty thousand dollars in one day for for one mm -hmm. of the charities. So that's always cool. All right, uh, I'm sure you. After all this in and out burger, you're ready for something to chomp on. <laughs> Probably, yeah. We should have Jesse box you up one and freeze dry it and send it over here. Yeah, just... he's still a Whataburger guy. It's just kind of... <laughs> but see, he wouldn't have to eat one then. He could be thinking he's getting rid of one. Pretty scary. <laughs> All right. We'll catch everybody back here next week on Let's Talk Racing. Everybody enjoy this weekend's racing.